he missed a shot, and I look up, and I was like, dunk the fucking ball. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, my bad. I was like, I was open. He's like, yeah, dunk that shit. I was like, my fault. You right. That's the type of shit I like, though. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Twitter. Twitter is dying. Are you upset? Well, who wouldn't be? I don't know where I'm going to go for the, the either, random man. musings of either, stupidity man. that come out of my Me brain. Either. What are we going to do? Damn. I'm fighting a good fight. I'll be there until it's like... Until it won't let me log on. R.I.P. Welcome back to the Etcetera's. As always, I'm your host, Eddie Gonzalez. I'm joined by the sixth leading scorer in the league. I don't know. You're just going to let Luca have that? Like yes, yeah, yeah. More importantly, though, I'm wearing my Texas hat because we had such a huge win uh, this past week against Gonzaga. So shut up, my boys. There you go. Down number, Austin. number two. Did they storm the court? Um, did we, that's not a it's like, nah. We're too good. I don't know if we stormed the court, but we shouldn't have. We shouldn't we, have. Okay, we're supposed to beat fucking Gonzaga. They they, <laughs> they said it was like monumental uh, upset, but I'm like, yo, aren't they ranked like 18th? Like, I think we can win that game. It's it was cool. a new arena though. New arena, first big opponent. Yeah, it was special because of that. Yeah, got you. Got went into the Hall of Fame this last year. Yeah, man, shout out my boy. That's why I just want to give him showing some love real quick for one year of service. Can I hate a little bit? It was I, a great year, though. No, I mean, it, it, it was, I packed in a lot in that one year. <laughs> it's a great year. <laughs> you know what I mean? That lasted me a lifetime, so. That looked fun. Yeah, it, it was. Fun. Look it how you was. had a good time. So, we said we were going to check in after the little trip. Not the exact split I expected, but a split. A good one, yeah. I'll say. So, let's walk through it, because we had a great yeah. weekend in L.A. That's some fun. Clippers, I'm on the plane. Great team win. Great win. Seth went crazy. Fourth you quarter. You nice, efficient game. Great win. Great team win. Like, I'm texting you. from the, You text me on the plane. And it was just like, that was just, that was great fucking That was man. just fucking, man. Because we, we uh, held him to an under 100. Yeah. Uh, Paul George, then he was on a streak of like 30 points, four or five straight games. We did a good job of team effort on him. Um, Seth, who had, I think he might have missed the game before. I don't know. He missed the next game. Yeah, but he ended out the lineup, so he was coming in and get, had 14 in the fourth quarter for us. Ended up with 22. Like, so it was just a perfect storm that first game. It was and it was a midday game too, so those a little tricky in the league. Yeah, that know? was a weird start. One o'clock start. Kind of mad I missed that one. Had I known Drake was gonna not do the show for <laughs> yeah. for good reason for the takeoff. I'm so glad. He, I'm so glad we can go it. now. Yeah, we we've had we we're, we're plotting on this, yeah. but uh, had I known, I would would have been dope to catch this one. Great win. Great when you were excited, landed the plane, went to the crib. You were just like good spirits. Yeah, we're watching, man. The, we're watching the highlights. Like, this is the kind of ball we want to play. Yeah, it was just all around good ball from everybody. You know, we didn't shoot the ball well to start, but um, we generated so many good looks that I was like, all right, it's going to start to turn at mm -hmm. some point. Then Seth got hot. I made a couple shots there. We just were moving the ball great. Defense, though, picked up in the fourth. And able to cruise to the win. So this is where I was going next because you've been playing great defense this year. You're never going to win defense player of the year. I apologize. Ever. But you have been great this year. Yeah. And you were great in that game. Yeah. What is like your approach? Because there's a lot of people who feel like, yo, with everything on offense, you got to manage your energy. I don't see you manage your energy on defense, by the way. You're like almost two blocks a game. You like really getting after it. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling good on D, feeling like. I can move. That's the first good. That's the first indication. Being able to chase guys off of screens and switch, um, but for the most part, it's just like not being a liability because so many teams play pick on you basketball, where it's like bring mm -hmm. the weakest guy up on the court, screen him, and then we're gonna play one on one, expose him the whole game. So, not being one of those guys is key. Mm -hmm. As long as I can. <laughs> Not be one of those guys. I feel like I, I'm doing a solid job on defense. One of the things we talked about was the offseason weight work you did. And I get mentions. I got mentions all summer. Kevin needs eight pounds of muscle. Yeah. And he'll be fine. But you, you did, and some of that focus on your legs, you said something about, like, just your quads felt stronger. Is it on that end where you feel that, where you feel a little bit more physicality you can have, a little bit more burst? Yeah, being able to hit the ground and pop to the left or the right or – hit the ground again and try to contest another shot, you know, close out so you can stop on a dime, all of that stuff matters. And um, 
You know, it's not necessarily like just getting strong where mm-hmm. I can just push somebody out. Or, <laughs> but it's like being able to cover ground, being able to, you know, hit, load, and then turn, to go to the other side yeah. of the court, you know, that type of stuff. And, you know, that's key in being able to guard multiple defenders, I mean, multiple offensive players, different body types, all that stuff. So, yeah, the lower body was key. You know, obviously I'm not going to get super strong <laughs> at this point in my life where you'll see a notice, noticeable difference in my body type. But it's the subtle changes, I think, that uh, help me as I, as I get older and as I try to do more on the defensive side. We talked about this over the summer, did a couple of workouts with you, a lot of lunges, a lot of deadlifts, a lot, yeah. of, like, a lot of stuff I didn't expect you to be doing. And then it was like, I know I was beat. But you're doing this like 90 pound dumbbells and shit. So. Yeah, I mean, that's just an NBA workout. I mean, yeah. I've been conditioned to do this for the last yeah. 15 years. Yeah. So some of the exercises, you're probably strong enough to do it, but it's just like Vernon was working out with me. And I was like, bro, you're strong, but it's just the, the technique that you probably don't know yeah. just yet. Yeah. But I've been practicing since I got in the league. So yeah, it's, it's those typical. little small, small stuff is good for me. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you credit for the defensive end of the court. Thank now you. we move on to Lakers game. We didn't do much that night. We were just chilling. We didn't do anything. So, do you buy into, like, this was a long weekend in L.A. I, like, I don't want to make you disagree with your coach. I know he said something along those lines. Because I believe in the South Beach flu. I believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you buy into that or you you just, you know, the Lakers just came to play? Because I, I think it was just Anthony Davis. He was just the difference in the game. Yeah, he was the difference. He was just bigger than everybody that night. You know, and they did a good job of featuring him. Throwing the, mode, throwing the ball in live situations, dropping it off to when they got to the rim. Like, he just controlled the paint um, and the boards. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's an L.A. thing. You know, guys have – because I've seen guys, you know, get I mean, we get blown out in Indiana before. We get blown <laughs> out in some of the cities that you wouldn't look at as a, mm-hmm. you know – exciting young city, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that, but Anthony Davis, if you want to actually pinpoint something. They go Uncle again. What up, always? Cameo. <laughs> coming in on the cameo. What up, champ? You good? It's freezing out there? I like that jacket, it looked freezing. Yeah, goodness. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but if you want to, that loss is really on Anthony Davis. <laughs> you know, just playing so great. Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker. Russ. I think they hit timely game. shots. Like we was talking about, it was a, it was a possession. We was down six. Um, 93, 87 in the fourth. Yeah. We got phew, swing the patty, wide open three. In and out. In and out. Good shot, good look, good everything from them. In and out. They came down, hit a timely three, go up nine. It's just like they were hitting timely shots that were like backbreakers, and we was trying to get over the hump. Yeah. I had so many of them games where you like right there, yeah. but you can't finally get over the hump. You know, and I, and I seen that game t- starting to take shape. Like, damn, it's yeah. going to be one of those nights where they make shots, timely shots, and we just don't. Uh, but it happens that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a good game. The score didn't necessarily show that late. Yeah. It was a tight game. That pass Austin Reeves made to Lonnie on that Insane three Insane pass. Ridiculous. I, it, I thought I had my hand on the ball, too, and he just wrapped it with his left. I'm just like, you, you guys adjusted. You tried stuff. Clax got hurt. You started guarding AD. Yeah. And then, and then you know, it was just it was just a tough game. It was know? a tough one. So, we went to eat out the words, went home, and you were one of the things you told me, like, as soon as we walked in, I was like, I'm having fun. Like, I know we lost, and that sucks because I'm having fun. Mm-hmm. And – the story comes out like two days later that you talked about that night, and it's since been clarified a little bit. Chris Hayes, yeah, clarified. but and now it's part of the story that you did say is like I'm having fun addressing this challenge and taking it on and yeah. grinding with these guys and being influenced. So what I want to know because you guys have cleared it up now, mm-hmm. and I think if you read the full story, it's pretty clear as well. Yeah, is it frustrating when that happens and you're like, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, I even know that it makes sense. Yeah, it's frustrating more so on my end because I could have explained it a little better. Mm-hmm. It's just like when I have these rants, when I go off and talk about <laughs> the state or just my experience in the league, in my mind, I'm talking to Nets fans yeah. and people who follow our team every day. You know, So that's who I'm trying to get this message out to. And I should have worded it. It was said it a little better. It went more in detail than what I was talking about. And when I said the starting lineup and that people expect us to win because I'm out there, what I was saying is, like, you look at our team, 
you look at what guys are asked to do in these positions, even me, let's start with me. Being able to, sometimes I got to play center. Sometimes I got to play point guard. I got to, when I get in the post, it might be two people coming, three people coming. When I get in pick and roll, I might get trapped. When I come across half court, I might get two people on me. So it's like, it's, I'm stepping outside of myself trying to figure the game out as well. So when I have four or five turnovers where mm -hmm. I can't get shots up sometimes, like don't expect so much because we're going through so much as a group. Mm -hmm. I went down the line, Edmund Sumner, a year off last year from Achilles injury, being asked to start, play point guard, and I'm in those meetings. They, Edmund, guard the ball all mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. that's, that's tough to do for anybody, especially when you're guarding the best players. You know, you know, the most elusive players on the court was just the point guards. So he's stepping outside of himself a little bit, trying to help the team. Royce O'Neal, same way. Basically playing backup point guard for us. Had his first triple-double last yeah. year. But that's because he'd been put in those positions of playing point guard for us. Mm -hmm. Plenty of times, Jock said, yo, Royce, go bring it up for us. And he's setting us up, putting us in actions. He never did that in in ba at Baylor or in Utah. So yeah. another guy stepping outside of himself to help the team. Clax, the only center on the roster for a little period of time because mm -hmm. Ben was out. We not playing Dayron as much. He got a battle with, with the big guys a lot. So I'm telling the f Nets fans basically, like when we have ebbs and flows of how we play, when it's – you know, we go on, we 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 show spurts of like being a great team, and then we will have like a a yeah. lull when we like, damn, we can't make a shot, or it's not looking good. It's just the fact that yo, we all trying to do more to help the group mm -hmm. based on the circumstances. So when it doesn't look good, like giving up 150 points, like don't ex don't get too upset yeah. about what's going on right now because look, look, well, we all trying, and then you, what happened in the next game? A lot of people say, well, you ignited a fire under the team. I was like, well, you should have seen our film session right before we got <laughs> on the plane from SAC to Portland. Mm -hmm. Jock was straight to the point on what we needed to do as a team. I don't think it was because of the article. Mm -hmm. And I maybe should have explained myself a little bit better to Chris Haynes. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like this. So I'm glad we were able to do this. But that was my intentions when I said it. Yeah. I was more so trying to say, look, yo, Protect my, I was trying to protect my teammates from, like, yo, the expectations from everybody else. Like, yo, relax a little bit. Let us work this out mm -hmm. until everything get right. But look how we playing, though. 40-point wins, 30-point wins, five straight games of under 100. And then we'll give up 150 and lose to the Lakers. It's just like, oh, shit, the sky's falling. I'm like, yo, <laughs> do you see the progression of our team and what we doing? And, and guys are stepping up and trying to do more. So when they actually in those roles of, like, Getting back to, all right, this is what you, we need you here for. Like, Edmund going to be better. Mm -hmm. Royce going to be better. Clack's going to be better. I'm going to be better. Joe going to – and I forgot about Joe. I didn't say Joe. Joe coming off a whole year not playing, mm -hmm. basically playing a three-fours. Yeah. Being, having to guard bigger guys, not shoot, not just shooting. He going down to the rim a little bit, dropping stuff off, just being more – just expanding his game. So, everybody expanding their game um, – throughout this time, so it's gonna be ups and downs through our team. And I was just like, don't expect us to be perfect every night or great every night, or it's gonna be times where we playing um, incredible basketball and the next game we're not, we not we might not be on, we might not be able to hit shit. So mm -hmm. like, that was my whole thing. And I definitely could have worded it better. I wouldn't put that on anybody but myself because I could have explained it like this. I give credit to Chris, like, Knowing as a writer who's written stories, the social team's going to read through that and they're going to pick, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not necessarily him. Yeah. I give credit to him for coming out and saying, hey, it was this. I yeah. know you retweeted him and, and all that. Um, no, I give him but it's, it's, that. it's tough. It, it is tough to, you know, have your quotes be mm -hmm. plastered around like that. And you're like, no, nah, I meant it. And, and I like what you just said because those are the combos we have. It's like we're excited that Royce is doing more than he's, he yes, used to exactly. doing. Same for Ed. Clax, me and you have been talking about Clax all season, just like, yo, like, he clearly put in the work. I exactly. told him at the Laker game, like, yo, I've seen that work you've been putting in, big exactly. fella. And so, so, I think it's like. But when I named him, yeah, <laughs> it it looked like, and then when I said y'all expecting him to win because of, I'm out there, which is how I feel. It's just like, well, you got, your expectations are way higher for these guys in our team because you're looking at yeah, the, the name. Because the, the way team. it is, it's like. If the team has Kevin, if the team has Steph, if the team has LeBron, exactly. the team has, it's a title contender. Exactly. That's the idea of it. And and fair or unfair, it just is what it is. So, yeah. I mean, I I think 
you know, you answered kind of one of my other questions. Did you galvanize the team? What, what I do wonder, though, is is that a thing you – have to talk to guys about, or is it just like understood? Like the media is 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 it is it's like yeah. You, I, mean, I, I sent the text out to the guys, you know what I mean, and then you know because I, I really felt like I, I felt bad about that. Shit. Like, you know what I'm saying to the point where it's like that almost embarrassed to walk in front of my teammates because I'm like fuck, I didn't mean it that way, and I know it's plastered everywhere, <laughs> and all your friends and family sent this to you, and it's just like fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because my intentions weren't to like do to to have that reaction. It was more sort of like calm our fans down yeah, with your yeah. nets because we've been you know they've been hearing so much about our team <laughs> and the media, and I'm concerned about that as a player. Yeah. Like I feel like I represent the fan base that I'm playing for on top of the you know name I'm playing for on the back. So I'm like any chance that I get to kind of calm the noise a little bit, kind of give them the state of our team. You know what I'm saying? I won't. I don't mind doing it, but I I think my approach could have been way better. I could have said stuff way different, you know, explained it a little better, but I'm glad Chris came out and did that. I'm glad we could do this. Hindsight is always 2020, yeah. of course. I mean, I think, you know, our, our conversation was like, yo, as your friend, as your trusted advisor, I kind of wish you, yeah, of course I wish you didn't do this because of the way it goes, because you have a podcast that we do. Exactly. And you get, but I also understand like, yo, Chris is a good dude. Yeah. Mark, Mark is a good dude. And it's like, you know, but, yeah. but, our conversation was like I could tell that it was weighing on you, and like you know, we we exchanged some messages to let you know. But so the least we talk about the sack game, the better. I, I know, <laughs> that like, was the sack game, right? Yeah, that was the sack game. Uh, well, like, I definitely want to show some love to sack though, because yes, we talk ball. Let's that is the ball. point. They, um, that is a good team, and we said it before you left because I stayed in LA, and before you left, it was like. That is not an easy that, game. That's not. That's a, a tough team. That's right a tough there. team for anybody in the league. I don't care if you're the Boston Celtics, Dan or Fox. You the, looks the great. worst record in the league. Playing against them, when you got, first of all, you can't really switch anybody on to Sabonis because he's too strong. Yeah. So that throws off a lot of your defense as well. When you don't want to, you want to keep your matchup. So now you got to chase off Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter, right now. Red Velvet. He playing like Clay step like <laughs> the way he coming off the handoffs and shooting a basketball right now. If you're not a basketball fan and locked in on the league, you gotta watch how Kevin Herter is shooting this ball right now. He in the half, he in the fifties, and like when you go through scout, you hear all these stats, and everybody just seems way better than what they are in scout and shoot around. Yeah. Like when we going, cause they have you gotta respect. But Kevin Herter shooting seven threes a game and feel like seven or eight, and they all at fifty percent. When you hear that, and then you watch the clips and the film when he the shots he's shooting, it's just like, oh shit, we're in for a long night. And then you got De'Aaron Fox coming down that hill at you all game. Harrison Barnes who can get a bucket on anybody in an isolation situation. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and Keegan Murray, like he he playing like Michael. Uh, <laughs> Michael Porter Jr., the way he kept, you know, at 6'9", catching and shooting like that. And then, you know, you got off the bench. Terrence Davis had 30 on Jesus. this. Jesus. They shot the hell out of the ball. They shot the piss out of the ball. But you got guys that can shoot it, that can get hot. Malik Monk. Trey Lyles, even a good bench piece. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think Matt, too, can shoot it from the big. Uh, 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 you know, so they got a deep team. And they even got Rashad Holmes playing minutes mm -hmm. for him. I might miss a couple guys as well. For, for the first time in a long time, their team makes a ton of sense. They make sense. They make sense. They have a starting lineup they like. They have bench guys they like. They have a ton of shooting. Yeah, and, and great Aaron coaching. Fox is an all star, and they have a great coach. And great coaching. And Mike Brown, every time it's a transition, he's screaming at them, "Run to the corner, get to the corner!" <laughs> every time we miss a shot, or every time it's a even a make, he's screaming, "Get up the floor, get up the floor!" And it's like, yeah, I see, I see, I see where they're going. I could see if they, you know, it's obviously you got to got to stay healthy, stay committed to the game plan, all of that good stuff, and you progress and be a good team. But this is a nice foundation they got right now. That was a nice night for them, national TV. Unfortunately for you. Unfortunately, it, it just uh, all just. And then they they're charged up. They, that's a really good team. You got to see my my giant child out there as well. I ran into him. He, he's he's like taller looking, than me. I yeah, hate it. looking like he just. 25. <laughs> Ew, wreck his son. Appreciate that. That's love. So, okay. That's a tough night. 
We're messaging about that. You're upset, obviously, but you're also moving on. Portland. So one of the things that happened in SAC is Ben came back. He looked better than he has so mm-hmm. far this season. But Portland looked a lot closer to being Ben Simmons. What is it like? What does that add to what you guys are doing? Because this was a tough win. You had to really strap up. And one thing I like about Ben, and I was saying I've been critical about him on Running Back, on FanDuel, FanDuel TV, uh, is – Shameless plug. I've been OD critical of him, but he takes that matchup every night on defense, and he does. And he gave Dame hell that night. Dame yeah. got his shit off because Dame is Dame. But especially in the fourth quarter, he really made it tough for him. And now on offense, he's starting to have an impact. What does that add, that element add to your team when you have it? I mean, just – you just look at the measurables, you look at 6'10", that can handle ball, that can get into the paint, finish, and that just could cause some momentum whenever he has it, you know. And that's what he did. He 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 drew people into the paint, kick out, raced the ball to the court, kicked the ball ahead. That's the thing with him. Mm-hmm. He liked to kick the ball ahead, and that's key. He almost hit you a couple times he hit in me, your face. He hit me on some 2K shit, like in 2K. <laughs> like, if a dude you know going to miss a free throw, you're already ready to go score. Yeah. So – Eubanks missed a free throw. He already looking at me like before the shot go up. <laughs> and I'm drifting. Yeah. I never get those. Yeah. I'm never yeah. getting a catch. Hey, Euro to a dunk. It's hard. Yeah. You know? That was that was nice, by the way. Of, yeah. I didn't give you no credit for that, yeah, but that was nice. Great pass, man. <laughs> uh, Speaking of Euro, though, his Euro was the play when I'm like, oh. That one with the. He's got a little he burst. The right with the, that was I mean, on, the, on a guy he has some history with. <laughs> yeah, he showed some. He just showed some fluidity with that joint too, because yeah. it was a great move, great finish. And so, and what I really stood out to me, like I told somebody yesterday, like I had we had ran a play out of timeout where I fake like I'm coming to the hand, I'm going back door every time. He threw the back door, and I seen somebody shift it over. I think it was Eubanks or maybe it was Nurkic who was in the game at the time, and I kicked it to Joe in the corner. He missed a shot. And I look up, and I was like, dunk the fucking ball. I was like. <laughs> you did it later. I was like, Same all right, door, my man. I was, like, I was open. He's like, yeah, dunk that shit. I was like, my fault. You right. And I was like, that's the type of shit I like, though. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like you enter the game. You see it. Like, you know what I mean? Once you into it mentally and, and emotionally like that, like, then I know you, you know, you ready to play. So he was able to do that, which led to he knocked down them three free throws, which was huge for us. You, he, he did when they tried to do the hack. There's two plays in that game that I thought were huge in the development of your team. And your role on the team as well is like one was Ben did hit you for a backdoor for a dunk. I think it was out of a timeout. Yeah, fourth quarter. Yep, fourth quarter. And did. it was like, oh, shit, okay. And then the other one was Yuta, who I want to talk about as well. He had a drive and he kicked. It's like, man, I've only seen you take maybe three catch and shoot threes. Corner this year. threes? A I'm corner like, three for you? Wide open corner threes. He's, he's leading leading threes, right? The three point percentage right now. You you he's been amazing for you guys. You wanna talk you want we got we could talk about you for like down in the next hour. I, I need <laughs> I need a I need an eighteen jersey. I t- I had to tweet the same. I might have to get one. He's nice and he's really taking advantage of the role he's been given here. And big guy, he's he defends with energy. I seen him at the Laker game. He had the ice pack on. He, I think I might have to tell him at this point to relax a bit because <laughs> he's flying around everywhere. Yeah. And I look up and you was on the floor. <laughs> he'll flip over somebody <laughs> and he'll be like he'll try to chase a rebound, and fall. I'm like, and then he'll hop back up so quick. I'm about to start telling him like, "Yo, we need you out on the floor, bro." I he's know so you're playing up. so hard, but. Some of the possessions you might have to just jab at a little bit and then, you know, wait to the next. It's an opportunity. Uh, but, I mean, that's probably something he'll ignore me on because he plays extremely hard every possession. I feel like he in the right spot. His jump shot looking solid right now because he, his fundamentals look perfect yeah. on that joint. You know, so I'm happy for him. Anybody that come in there and you don't and know what type of opportunity you're going to get and you find your role so fast – that's what the NBA about to me. He earning himself some money right now. Yeah. Non guaranteed deal, I believe. And it's he's he's definitely earned his spot in that rotation. And yeah. it's gonna be hard to get him out if it's he's gonna, shooting fifty yeah. percent from three. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of those people that's gonna be highly, you know, if we don't lock him down, it's gonna be <laughs> a lot of people gonna want him. He um, plays so hard, he dunked on his basket earlier this year. Realized. Yeah, <laughs> I get it, but damn. <laughs> Maybe catch that one, you Yeah. <laughs> so all right, looking forward. Kyrie is maybe coming back. You also have the Philly game coming up. Yeah. Ben's return. You, 
Are you gonna lie and say it's just a regular game? Nah. I don't think Ben is gonna lie. I don't lie think it's a regular game. game for the people. You guys were charged Philly. up last year for that shit. That wasn't a regular game as much as we might say it is. Regular preparation. Let's put it that way. That's good. Regular preparation. We don't change nothing up in a pregame shoot around. We don't change the routine up because we playing an opponent like that. But internally, once the game start, you want to go out there and play better because you know the stage. There's camaraderie with you guys that I think, you know, and I think the article kind of overshadows that, but I see you guys both on the court and behind yeah, the scenes yeah. with Ben as well. Like I mean, I've, the article probably did um, shine a light on our, our group as a whole. Yeah. If you read the whole thing. Yeah, if you read but, it. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see, I mean, wins definitely do that, and good basketball does that, brings you together, and um, you see that with our group. I'm ready for the Philly game. Um, we don't know if Jaws going to be there. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, when is this dropping? This will probably drop, what? We're looking at Monday, Tuesday? Monday. So, hopefully you'll have beaten Memphis by then. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to Philly game. Don't shoot free throws afterwards. If you do, don't throw a ladder. Yeah, that's one thing I realized. You can't shoot <laughs> after him. And what you think about that? So, I was getting like from a fan out. perspective. I was getting cussed out on Twitter, but like when you see that, I've seen the arenas getting tore down a thousand times. Yeah, Buddy could have waited five minutes. Now, did Giannis have to throw the ladder down? No, of course not, but. Now it's come out. There's more to it, Montrez and all this stuff, and it's yeah. like, just shoot them at home, Giannis. Just save yourself. Just go home. Trouble. Just, you know? I mean, they're going home too. Like I went look at their schedule. They're they, going home. They, oh yeah, they. Yeah. I it, thought maybe they was staying over yeah. and then a road trip. Just go home, Trez. Though I to, don't. Yeah, I mean, obviously <laughs> to avoid all of the bullshit, just wait. To, just wait till tomorrow. I he, mean, he came out today and said, "I'm not apologizing," which was kind of shocked me. But, yeah, yeah. But Surprise, whatever, yeah. I want to talk about a little bit more basketball before we move on. We had an argument. I'm not going to say who the other players were, but the gist of it is we were giving Shea Gilgis Alexander his flowers. He's mm. been amazing this year. I don't know if he's still at 30 because he scored 16 yesterday, but he's been great. Are you surprised at all or you've known this guy? You've played him in the playoffs before. I uh-huh. have, yeah. you surprised at all or you know this guy was always there? I'm not surprised at all. I mean, um, I know who he worked with in the summer, so I, I know this. I know about his work ethic for a while. Uh, you know, it's one of the dudes that just love basketball, love the history of the game. You add, you throw all of that stuff in the pot, and then you work on your game as much as he do. I mean, I mean, shit. I mean, the moves that he's making is just like like sharp, veteran type moves. That's just work. You know what I'm saying? That's just straight work and a mentality of like this. Is what I want to do out here. You know, once you. Add all of that in a pot, it's tough to stop. It ain't six six strong, you know. That size to be a lead ball handler like he is, they're playing some good ball out there. I don't know why people are so quick to try to trade him. He is the get of the Paul George trade. This is why you build like OKC is building to have a player like Shea, yeah. who's probably going to be the All Star if he keeps this up. It's the point is to have him. And yeah, you got Chet coming. Who knows what you have who next knows year? What you can you have get. Giddy, who looks like he's a talent. Yeah. yeah, they you just keep, keep adding. I think they're going to keep adding. I think you look up and – how old is Shea? 20? 25. That's By young. I mean, 28, 29, I mean, you can – and you see a team around them, it could be – <laughs> you never know who could be on that team with the assets that they have out there. So, yeah, it's always natural for NBA fans to want to see a guy that's like you – know, you know him, but you don't recognize everybody on this team. It's just like, well – He's with a bunch of nobodies. I'm like, well, you look at that Thunder team. They got some solid basketball players over there. They're building it up. With Lou Dort, solid ball player. Mm-hmm. Reason why he got paid. Mm-hmm. Josh Giddy, just solid ball player. Will get paid once his rookie deals up. Um, am I saying his name? Pokulchevsky? Mm-hmm. I mean, 6'9", that it's could shoot around. it, could play multiple. Like, these dudes are good players and over there. And they got Chet over there and some nice Damn, outfits. I mean, just yeah, waiting. shit. Damn. And who knows what comes Once next Once he year. come back, it's going to be ridiculous out there. I mean, they just got size up and down the board. I like the Jalen. Is it Jalen Williams with the bush? Yep. I think they got two Jalen Williams they over do. there, do they? Two Jalen. I, like, I just like their size. You know, he played defense, can shoot it, like athletic. And then they had great coaching. Yeah. They're you playing a good brand of ball over there. Good ball, man. Shea looks amazing. A good place, man. I love what I'm seeing out there. That shit is just 
incredible to see the talent, just the way the game being played. Like, man. I, I put him in that tier. Garland, Trey. I oh, think yeah. he's that good. Let me see. Don't rank him. Don't I'm not going to rank him, but I'm trying to figure out that tier. Ja. Because we're looking at it tier. as it like what's what makes you a part of that tier? Is it just that your young age? guards tier? Just you know, young lead guard. Young lead guard. It's so a, you want to put like a hero in there? I think Tyler Hero's in there as well. I think Tyrese Halliburton is in there as well. Is Tyrese Maxey in there? Maxey's in there. Probably tail in. So we saying let's get Jordan a few Poole's names. in there. You got the Jordan Poole's, Maxey's, Halliburton's. These Trae are Young's, future all stars. These guys. Darius Garland's. Shay's, Shay. Shay's high up on that list to me. Trey. Trey. Tough shooting season for Trey. I think he'll De'Aaron Fox. There you go. Put De'Aaron in there. Um, we got some great young guards in this league. It's some inc- insane, insane young guards. Are you going to put, put K in there? Not yet. Kate, give, give me another year. He give just got hurt, by the give way. Me, yeah, no. Shit. That I'm sucks to that. see. Get well, my bro. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I just wanted to give Shea his flowers, and I know you were on the side of giving Shea his flowers as well. And I seen it. I seen it. Back in 2018, I, I can't – I didn't see him scoring the way he's scoring right now. The different varieties posting up, fade mid. Yeah. I didn't see exactly this, but I'm like, this some talent right there. And some size. And ball handling that I have, you know what I mean, at 6'6", six, six, then it's a lack of work with this and – See where he is now, man. Another, another guy taking advantage of the opportunity is Lawyer Marketing. We'll just stick on Lawyer forever, but he he's completely showed out out there. Went to war with Book last night. Big yeah, clutch shot. Last league. night, Book had 49. Big clutch shot. Good battle. He Lawyer. had a nice turnaround fade for yeah. the game. Dude, pivoted through the double, through the shot up. Like, that was, that was nice. Man. Confidence and opportunity. So, all right, moving on from who? We talked about him last time. He's nice enough to post our video. Thirty eight special. You like the album? You probably had the album like six months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had it probably because this was I was knew all the songs down there the first week of the season. Yeah, I was I, I was kind of surprised. I wasn't paying no attention, but he dropped a bunch of these already. Band of Brothers is fire. There's a couple of the other ones I heard before. <laughs> you might have heard them because I played them in a the car. Been that. But um, but yeah, he dropped Band of Brothers. That was the only one he dropped, but. I mean, we, I've been listening to it since, you know, September, October, one of those. Um, but, I mean, just an elite, man, elite body of work. I love the rappers that just put out a bunch of albums and yeah. shit, like three or four a year, 10, 10 11 songs, seven, eight songs. His last album was seven songs. Um, and also, I like how they do that. What I like is when people rap with him, they come to rap. Yeah. Like he's one of those type of rappers. Yeah. So Jimmy came to rap. Everybody can't rap on Battle Brothers. Everybody. Currency can't rap. Mm-hmm. They can't really hear. With, like, the thing I like about that genre of rap is that they all homies, yeah. but they all competitive at the end of the day. Like, you're you going to get the best of the best every time they all get on a song together where to the point where you don't know who had the best verse. Like, I just like the competitive nature between those guys, like the Bennies, the Ransoms, the 38s, Romes. All these dudes, they just compete. Yeah, uh, SZA announced her album SOS. Thank you, SZA. She had to be watching the show, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Thank the show, man. Thank Eddie for getting SZA to drop. I've been the album. waiting patiently for years. So this is what I want to do next month. We're gonna wait till SZA. Mm-hmm. We should do a top ten list. We made a couple top ten lists in LA. Top ten right? list. Uh, Best album of the year. We'll do it. We got our VP of content, Nate, here. We'll, we'll do something on the episode. site. We'll make a graphic. We'll do like a thing. That should be a whole episode. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Put some thought into it. Got to do a lot of listening. Yeah, put some thought into it. We'll put, but I want to wait for SZA because it's probably number one on my list. Wait, give me the exact date. What? She doesn't have a date yet. She didn't say a date, no. just a, a month? Yeah, just December. That's nasty because she can just push that back. That's just Ugh. evil. It's just be New Year's. She's definitely going to push it back to 2023. She... Please don't, please. Sure. <laughs> but I'm excited for that. Anything else you listen to, or you just 38 special all week? What do you? Just Drake 38 for now. Like, I need you to listen to GT's album. I'm gonna send it to you. It's one of the Detroit guys. I like the Detroit vibe. You've heard him before. Yeah. I need you to listen to him. Uh, yeah. So one other thing I want to ask you about. Well, two. Hold on. Before we get off music, 
I want to get your thoughts on what 21 Savage said about Nas. I was talking about this with my boy Plus last night. He's like the biggest Nas fan I know. Yeah. That word relevance be kicking people's ass. Yeah. I think, so Nas is an icon, Nas is a legend. Nas will forever have fans. I think what 21 means is on a, I think what 21 means is on a mainstream level. Yeah, that's what I felt too. And in that sense, he's right. Maybe he's not the right messenger for it right now, but in that sense, he's right. What yeah. did you think? Yeah, I just thought the word relevant. This was something that he could take out because right after that, he said he made great music and he got a huge fan base and people just ignored that part of it. <laughs> but if he would have said, like you said, mainstream instead of relevant, that would have hit even more and people would have understood exactly where he was coming from. Because I got it for sure because you're not hearing Nas songs. You're not. It's just not. In the, on the radio or in the clubs or when you do doing anything, but you sit down in your car and on the way somewhere, you're going to throw that Nas on it. People, and people were talking about it. People loved it. My favorite part of that was how upset Kodak was. He was pissed. He was really riding for Nas. I love that for Kodak. <laughs> Kodak know the game, man. And, and that, that thing, 21 might have pissed him off when he said no, he did. the he versus, was, the versus. Yeah, he's he, he been on his helmet ever since then. Yeah, so, I guess a, like I said, it's a competitive game. They all compete against each other. They, they, I like that part, that part of the game, especially with the young dudes. They got away from that a little bit. Yeah. I think, you know, relevance is so tied into, like, sales. And yeah. That's just the new era of thinking yeah. that shit. Nas is They're obviously all relevant. relevant. They're but all Nas is not. We know Nas. Nas is not mainstream. I'm going to call him mainstream. But that's fine. He's, I don't think he wants to be. I don't think he wants to be either. Yeah. The formula to mainstream doesn't entertain Nas, yeah. though. So, all right. Twitter. Twitter is dying. Are you upset? Who wouldn't be? <laughs> you are like Twitter. You're on the sports Mount Rushmore for sure. You might be on the Mount Rushmore Twitter in general. This this has to impact you. I want I want let's say the NBA Mount Rushmore. Nah, I'll, I'm gonna say, say sports. That. I'm gonna give you your credit. Sports. Ah, it's been some great tweeters. He's got some great tweets. Thicker than a kindergarten pencil. Yeah, will never die. I, I don't think that was my best content, man. To be honest, <laughs> I think I've said some more clever, wittier things than that. Um, That's not even up there. Yeah, I, right. I, I had some great entries, and I and I'm and I realized how how classic my twitter page is right now <laughs> so i'm very conscious of like all right this is a good one <laughs> all right all right enough, enough credit to you but nah i mean i'll i don't know where i'm gonna go for the, the either, random man. musings of either, stupidity man. that come out of my e brain either what are we gonna do i'm gonna give like my best group chat and just give my number like let's just do the text group chat i just i got too many text group chats like i love the the Duality of going to the, t the Twitter. I feel like you're different people with each yeah, one. Yeah, like, fuck. Why? Yeah. Why? Like, why is it? We, we have to find a new place. It doesn't make a new place or something. But that's like, I mean, Twitter for me, and I think for you as well, but like, Twitter for me has this weird place in everything I've done. And even before meeting you there, like, basically every business connection I ever made was there. Even all the way back to Gotti, who you met last year. Yeah. It's like, yo, I want to write for you. I was like, all right. And then my journey starts from there. My origin story is on Twitter. So Damn. I'm fighting the good fight. I'll be there until it's like, until it won't man. let me log on. R.I.P. Okay, last thing. Black on black KD3s. You say does, those? Does this mean Eagle Eye, every Eagle Eye fan scoped them out? Does this mean retro is coming? Like, how does that? Kai warms up in the ones sometimes. I yeah. Noticed. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, I haven't. You haven't seen the threes in a long, long time, and I just pop up and shoot yeah. around. I'm definitely testing them out to okay. see. Um, as far as a release date, I have no clue yet, but that looks like that's on board to drop soon. Well, not. I don't want to say soon, but like in the near future. At some point. Okay. At some point. I've been dying to ask you about these off-white fifteens since you wore them on the yeah. show. One. I, when you're done, like, let me let me get those signed the, for me. Oh no! Nah, mm -mm. Come on. No, they're one right. or ones. That's why. That's exactly why, why you shouldn't, because like, I'm in, I'm about to start collecting my stuff. Okay. Fine. That are like one on ones. Whatever, bro. Yeah, bro. So like, no, nah, yo, if somebody else asked me for them. I'm just sitting there like, yo, you really think I'm gonna give you the one on ones? I kind of thought I had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I thought I was like the only one bold enough to be like, yo. And I got yeah, cameras pointing at you. You would be like, yo, let me get them joints. Yeah, yeah I mean, you I, would try me, but um, I got so much memorabilia do. at the crib. You, you owe me a jersey. I'll say that. I, didn't I give to you? Yo, I feel like I signed a lot of shit for you, man. But it's all right. I got you, man. No, I know no. you want the white bosky out and the shorts too. I got you. Man. All right. I'm not putting you. you on the spot. But I'm being on the spot. You are, but no. So, so tell me a little about these off white genetics. Like, did, this is something you did. This is something that. Uh, I mean, obviously, we all have respect for Virgil, and I know how much I respected the off white collection. So, you know, I got a, I, you know, the team. They color up a lot of my peas, my own core joints, joints that don't hit the retail. Yeah. Um, just solely for me, so they drew them joints up for me, cooked them up. When I first seen them, I didn't really, I didn't even know that they were coming. You didn't I didn't place it. Nah, I was just like, damn, these shits. You know, then I seen the tongue, and that's like, oh, all right, now they remind me of the Prestos. Before that, I wasn't really thinking off white until I was I, thinking Fear of God at first. You remember them joints they met? Yeah. Met? Then I seen the tongue, I was like, all right, they remind me of the Prestos, um, off white Prestos. I love them, man. It just, I mean, seeing them from the TV just looks like they look like Prestos. You took them out the rotation and you brought them back. Is that normal? Is that typical for you? You don't do the new pair of you. I don't, but I feel like I've been rotating about six KD since training camp. Mm -hmm. I try to, so I can just, I've been practicing in a few of them so I can just, you know, mix up the flavors a little bit more than I usually do. Um... So it looks like I need a new six through seven though, because the KDs, these are the first ones that I, the fifteens, the first ones that I feel like I could just straight out the box throw them on and they feel. You did that with the Ant Pearls. I literally watched you take them out the box. Yeah. I'm like, you no orthotics, no nothing. Yeah. No, you just threw them. On. No, I threw the orthotics in, but I usually got to give me a look, give me at least a workout in them. Mm -hmm. But um, now the fifteens, I just throw them out the box and go hoop in them, you know? So it's, it's I'm switching the flavors up a little bit more than I used than I did in the past. Yeah, I've seen them at the game and was like, ooh, this is a thing. Like, yeah. I, I, I text Nick DiPaolo, was like, have you seen these? And he was kind of fucked up about it too. Yeah. So that was fire. One on one, they're not, you're not gonna do those. Nah, they're not, I may, obviously I'm making another pair for me, if I ask. All right, no, no size 10, 10 and a half, none of that? I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to. I don't know. All right, it's cool. It's cool. It's fine. I'm gonna have to put put the green light on them now. Since all right, last name before we go. You seen this video? Your Washington Commanders. Your guy, Terry McLaurin. Yeah, I seen that. Okay, so they played the who's the most famous person in your phone game. You would win this game. I feel like you just you'd absolutely win this game. It'd be a great game for you. Who would you pick? Like, is it just Jay? He's I'm gonna go to Jay. Uh, I don't have his number in my phone. Come on now. I don't have, I don't, I don't, we don't have too many famous. I could call fucking uh, Steph. <laughs> That's a good one. That might win the game. So he didn't want to call you. He didn't want to interrupt you. Are you are you, are you you willing to call him and tell him what, what was your deal? Yeah, I'll call him. All right, let's I'll see. ask him why. You guys did the jersey swap. You guys are like real. Yeah, I'll ask him That's why really he game. didn't call me. Yeah. Team looks great, by the way. I don't want to talk about too much because I don't want to talk about my team. You might end up hating. They look great, though. So. I'm about to call Hunky. Terry McLaurin right now. Watch him not answer. This is going to be the funniest part. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> you didn't answer. I'll give him credit. They play tomorrow. Play tomorrow? They do. He's probably locked in right You're now. You're on the road. All right. Two locked in answers to the KD call. That's cool. So, look, it's been great. You have a long road trip after this. You come back, stop. You're getting holidays on the road. Do we? We'll oh, yeah, three game trip. We'll, 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 we'll check in after this. Yeah, man. I'm yeah, a, man. It's always good checking in with the. Yeah. With I'm excited the for that Philly game. I might drive Philly, down Philly, Toronto, Indiana. Y'all owe Indiana one, by the way. Y'all got them back, but you owe them one for the. Yeah, they smacked us. Yeah. Toronto been playing good. Philly. That's the game. Joel's been a monster. Joel's been a monster. My I felt like Brooke did a great job on him. And then late in that game, I think it was yesterday, he special. got into his mid bag. Swish, swish, swish. Side step, swish. Like, you can't beat that. Y'all have y'all have a little beef. I hope it continues. I want to see some more sarcastic bullshit. Too. I'm sure he's going to say something to me <laughs> that's going to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, look, it was great. We'll catch you up. We out.